you should not buy here in 2024. Due to the higher interest rates that we're now seeing, due to the fact that the pandemic has changed people's behaviors in terms of where they live and work, the whole regional property landscape in the UK has changed. And you need to ensure that you're now not getting caught out with that and not using measures and approaches from a few years ago. You need to ensure that you are investing in the right areas and I'm here to help with that because I'm gonna be letting you know four areas where I think you should not invest in 2024. I've looked at and been involved with hundreds of property deals over the last five years for ourselves and for our clients and I'm also a property mentor. And I'm putting all of that knowledge and experience into this video, so let's get going. So the first area is London. What we've seen with the increase in interest rates over the last 18 months is that the areas with higher values have been hit hardest by these changes. Due to the increase in interest rates, this has really affected property prices in London and the South because people have been unable to afford the higher interest rate payments and charges. So people are less likely to want to move and or even buy property in the case of first time buyers. And we've seen this in the data as well. In 2023, prices in London dropped by 2.4%. And going forward, this trend is going to continue. Savills are predicting that London has the lowest capital growth in the UK over the next five years, 13.9% compared to the Northeast, for example, which is the highest at 21.4. So that's an 8% difference between the bottom London and the northeast the top and another reason why i don't think that london is a great place to invest is the lower yields and it is these lower yields that are causing landlords issues now because deals aren't stacking and properties aren't stacking now because of the higher interest rates and if you look at the data on yields london's always been poor in terms of uh, yields because of the high purchase prices and the relatively low rental compared to that purchase price so on average yields in london are sitting at 4.9 percent which is the lowest in the country and if you compare that to an area which has some of the highest yields the northeast you've got yields there on average at 7.34 percent but i've seen properties with much higher yields than that so you can get yields of like 9 10 percent even 11 percent in the northeast so they are nearly treble what they are um, in london so it is those yields that will give you cash flow as an investor so that's another reason to avoid London at this point in time. Because of the low yields in London and because of the high interest rates, it is now very likely that despite rents rising that a lot of buy to let properties in london will not be breaking even and will not be making a profit will actually be likely to be making a loss when you factor in management charges and you factor in voids and and maintenance costs that is another reason why we've seen dips in demand and prices in london because there will be landlords sort of giving up and throwing in the towel and this is a pertinent point because where you're looking at buying properties property for a few hundred thousand pounds in London and you're not getting the yield and then throwing in the fact that actually because of the interest rates you're going to potentially make a loss on some of these deals that return on investment is going to be very poor and you're better off using that capital elsewhere because you're just tying it up in a property deal in London where you're not going to get anything from it and you're potentially going to be making a loss every month and coupled with the fact London as I've already mentioned has got such low growth expectations with Savills predicting some of the lowest growth in the country over the next few years and you're going to lose money on a deal it just doesn't seem a good investment whatsoever to be investing in London at the moment and I think as things stand and until rates come down, London is just a complete kind of no-go in terms of investing and you can just get much better value for money and much better returns elsewhere in the country. And the next area not to invest in is the South. By that I mean 
anything in and around London, East Anglia and the Southwest as well. And the reasons that are similar to that of London. Although these areas actually saw a boom and peaked after the pandemic due to people wanting to get out of the big cities and wanting to get more space and bigger properties and, and gardens, the so-called race for space. We saw huge rises in some of these areas in terms of prices. For example, the sort of wider south um, of England region was 17.3% higher in average house prices after the pandemic than before the pandemic. And that was a much bigger increase than anywhere else in the country. And some other data, which is interesting around those properties in and around stations which are commutable, uh, where people can work from home, but maybe commute to the office one or two days a week, have increased their prices by 13.5%. So that's the impact that the pandemic has had on those areas. But these inflated prices and this kind of peak behavior change after the pandemic weren't always gonna be sustainable and particularly with the impact of higher interest rates. I'm sure there's people actually now downsizing or moving back to cheaper areas or going back to the bigger cities potentially because they might not be able to afford the property now that you know rates have changed, their, their interest payments might be too high and interest payments obviously have also caused you know a drop in demand as well. So that has taken some of that heat off those areas that were booming after the pandemic. And the bubble was burst a little bit if we look at some of the data from 2023. So the south of England saw a drop in house prices of 3.4% and that's compared to the national average of 1.8% according to data from Nationwide. And interestingly, East Anglia is actually the weakest performing region in the whole of the UK with a drop in house prices of 5.2%. And that just shows how things have changed and how those inflated prices and, and that boom has now cooled quite considerably and there's been a, quite a downturn, mainly fueled by interest rates. And another reason as similar to, to London why not to invest in these areas is because of the fact that you're unlikely to make much money from these properties, if any. You might even make a loss, as I mentioned, on London because of the higher values of these properties and the low yields. It is likely that you're going to make a small penny, if not make a loss on a monthly basis. So again, your capital is better spent elsewhere with places with better returns and better capital growth prospects into the future. The next area I will not be investing and I don't recommend that you invest is Scotland. And sorry for all of Scotland and all you Scottish people watching, but it's a bit of a mess in terms of investing at the moment. And there are multiple reasons why not to invest in Scotland. So let's look at them one by one. So firstly, you've got rent controls, which were something that was brought in temporarily, and then the government has kept on extending it. And this is on rent freezes on existing tenancies, which is now in place until March 2024. It's not viable for them anymore. And rent controls in Scotland have very much backfired for the government here with existing landlords because of the interest rate changes have had a bit of a perfect storm and they've decided to start selling up. So that's reduced supply. And then you've got new landlords, some of those being put off by the rent controls as well. So that has again reduced supply. So it's overall reduced supply and that has caused rents to actually increase dramatically in Scotland last year, which is the opposite consequence of what and is the opposite impact of what rent controls are actually meant to do. So looking at the impact of the rent controls in more detail to just to show you how badly they've gone down for the government, Scotland saw a 6.3% rise in rents in 2023. Edinburgh saw rents rise by 13.7%, which was the highest in the UK. Compared to the average rents in England, which increased at 6.1%, Scotland's increased at 6.3%, and that's despite having rent controls in place, which are meant to stop rental inflation and reduce the amount of rises in rent. So that's gone very badly for them. 
and the increase in Scotland was actually the highest since records began in 2012. Another reason not to be investing in Scotland is increase in taxes. So there's a tax called the additional dwelling supplement, which is for landlords for people that own two or more properties that has risen from four to six percent in december 2023 so it's an extra two percent of of tax which thrown in with everything else that's going on is just another kick in the teeth for investors so another reason not to invest in scotland is increased regulation there's more requirements for for landlords being brought in there's minimum standards for energy efficiencies, for rental properties, and there's enhanced tenants' rights and eviction protections, all of which make a landlord's job harder. And again, thrown in with everything else, it's just putting a lot of landlords off. So it's been a bit of a disaster for the Scottish government. Just generally, investors have lost confidence in investing there. Um, rental homes are 45% below 2019 levels, which just shows that there has been a fleeing of investors and landlords from the market. And that 45% drop is compared to a 29% drop in England. So it's much, much worse situation in Scotland. And just to demonstrate how bad the situation in Scotland has got and how much all of the changes that the government has made has backfired and actually made the situation worse. Glasgow and Edinburgh actually declared a housing crisis. That was the local councils declared an emergency situation due to the rising levels of homelessness, due to the rising rents. As I said, Edinburgh had the highest rents rises in the whole of the country and the shortage of supply. And that's all being fueled by you know, these rent controls and it is a dire situation and definitely means that I'll be steering clear of Scotland and investing there until all of this gets sorted out and the likelihood of that is uh, pretty slim. So that's why I won't be investing in Scotland anytime soon and I don't reckon that you should too. Guys, if you're enjoying this video today and getting a lot from it, could I ask a favor? Can you subscribe to our channel? It would really mean the world to us. So thank you very much. So the fourth area that I'm not investing in is tourist based holiday let areas. As we know, we saw a huge increase in staycations and people holidaying in the UK following the pandemic, particularly around 2020 and 2021. And that data has and that demand has actually um, continued. It dropped off in 2022, but has increased again in 2023. And this led to an increase as well in the number of holiday lets and holiday homes in the UK. According to BBC data, there was an increase of 40% of short term let properties in the UK between 2019 and 2022. And this has been compounded since then by the higher interest rates. And we know that there's been a lot of people switching to short term accommodation from buy to let because of the higher interest rates in a, a bid to try and earn more money from their property. So that number of 40% increase is going to be much, much higher now. But the impacts of this, particularly in these holiday destinations, these often quite rural, small towns and villages has been quite significant. It has seen people complaining that the towns are ghost towns outside of those peak holiday months that there is a shortage of supply of housing in these areas which is firstly increasing rents but not allowing people to actually live in those areas you know close to family and friends where they want to live so these areas particularly where we've seen quite a lot of complaints are cornwall north wales the lake district these are the areas that i'm referring to and talking about and another factor here is the oversupply issue is that so many people have been jumping into the holiday let market because of the boom that they've seen in staycations thinking that there's a good opportunity there but not factoring in the fact that everyone else is doing the same and that is causing an oversupply if it hasn't happened already i'd be very surprised in some of these areas that are reaching saturation point like for example cornwall saw a increase of short-term lets of 661 percent 
between 2017 and 2021. So if that's had a, an increase of 600% there, and that was before the kind of big boom that we've seen in staycations and the big boom in holiday lets that we've seen since, that number's gonna be like even more astronomical. And the demand for staycations and holidays and those kind of properties in those kind of areas hasn't increased by the same amount. So that means there is gonna be a huge oversupply of these properties, which means that they're not gonna perform as well, which means they might even, you know, make a make a loss in some circumstances so that's a massive factor here to consider as well another thing on the horizon for these kind of properties is the legislation which is going to come in at some point soon there is a government consultation out at the moment and that was actually brought in and very much lobbied for by some of these MPs in these areas where they have seen lots of complaints and those areas that have a high concentration of holiday lets such as Cornwall. The Welsh Government has already brought in some legislation around service accommodation properties and short lets where you they've brought in their own use class and you have to go through planning now to change a house into a, a short-term rental property and there is a register of these properties being considered as well so that is the type of legislation that the english government is thinking about bringing in and it is unclear in this legislation whether they are going to bring in something on a national level or whether they're going to leave it to the local councils to essentially come up with their own kind of policies and frameworks around kind of planning controls and it is those areas the holiday let areas that i'm mentioning those tourist destinations where there is the highest concentration of properties that are going to be at the most risk because it is those councils that are going to look to clamp down on those properties and try and reduce the amount of holiday lets which is going to put at risk a lot of those properties in those areas and essentially going to be a massive risk to those people who are investing there so for all of those factors with the oversupply with the potential legislation risks i wouldn't want to be investing in these areas because you're again they are expensive areas and you're tying up a lot of capital when there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of risk and your money is better spent elsewhere where you've got lower risks less unknowns and potentially better returns so that's my four areas to avoid investing in in 2024 but where should you be looking to invest well i would follow the sort of same approach as what i follow and what our investors follow with our guidance which is look for high yielding areas look for areas with good capital appreciation opportunities and where there is investment and regeneration going on which is going to then fuel more and more growth in those areas Areas. and it is kind of simple as that you're gonna to have to do your research but they are the factors that I follow when I'm investing and where I believe you should follow too thanks for watching till the end if you can do me one last favor if you got value from today's video please can you subscribe to the channel and like the video all of that engagement means more to us because we're trying to grow the channel. It means that people are getting value from it. They're finding this interesting and that just helps us to get more content and to keep continuing to make this content for you. So thanks very much in advance.